The sheriff's office alerting Norman residents to be on the lookout. A live report about the situation coming up. Plus, as the death toll in Turkey rises, a church showing the Oklahoma standard. And from sniffles to sore throats, our OU Nightly weather experts are here to tell us why you may be feeling under the weather. This is OU Nightly. For watching OU Nightly, I'm Dana Searles. And I'm Catherine Liberta. We begin tonight with wild Oklahoma weather leaving its impact on residents. Now, Dana, I know I've been feeling a little bit of that spring sickness. Oh, what about you? Yeah, I've definitely been feeling those colds and those sniffles, and the temperatures here are mild in Oklahoma, and there are some consequences coming along with those sunny skies here. Absolutely. Now let's hear about those consequences and why you might be feeling under the weather. Our OU Nightly meteorologist Colton Williams is live on the Gaylord balcony to explain why. Colton? That's right, ladies. Mild is a good way to put it. It feels downright gorgeous out here today. Feels much more like a late March or a mid-April day than a mid-February day. We've seen temperatures hanging out in the 60s and 70s all day long. If you check out these temperatures statewide, you see I-40 I and northward looking at temperatures anywhere from the middle to upper 60s. Here in central Oklahoma, temperatures hanging out in the middle to lower 70s. Check out the Red River where that cloud cover has parted throughout most of the day today. Temperatures in the 80s. We have topped out at 87 in Love County there on I-35 and the Red River. Now talking about our wind gusts going on now, been a bit breezy here in Norman throughout the day today, but parts of Oklahoma seeing much heavier wind gusts right now, particularly the Panhandle and southwestern Oklahoma, seeing several wind gusts in excess of 50 miles per hour, and that's not helping drive up this. That's helping drive up the cedar allergy, not helping those allergy sufferers. Thankfully, has come down just a bit in that tree category. But coming up, we're going to break down severe weather chances coming up. We got two storm systems along the way. Plus a weekend cool down, but next week looks like a good rebound. Ladies will have all that coming up. For now, back to you. Thanks, Colton. And the Cleveland County Sheriff's Office is on the lookout for a suspect who is facing charges of assault with a dangerous weapon. Jaden Brannon is live in the newsroom with more information. Jaden. Catherine Dana, the Cleveland County Sheriff's Office is looking for Stephen J. Pittman, a white male, six foot two, dark brown hair and hazel eyes. Pittman is a suspect in an assault with a dangerous weapon case that's currently under investigation. He was last seen walking southbound on US 77 and 48th Street in Noble, Oklahoma, wearing a red and white shirt, a brown cargo jacket and jeans. If you see this person, please call 911. Back to you both in the studio. Thanks, Jaden. And Senate Bill 291 was unanimously passed on Monday, allowing minors to request victim protective orders to help prevent future harassment. Senator Casey Murdoch, who proposed the legislation, said there are currently no protective orders for children, which still allows them to be stalked and harassed. Passing this bill will allow children the power to seek their own protection. This bill is now being sent to the House of Representatives, and if approved, the law would take effect November 1st of 2023. An investigation is now being conducted after a 44-year-old mother took part in a fatal solo skydive in Salisaw, Oklahoma last weekend. According to local authorities, Heather Glasgow has had participated in a tandem dive and took two skydiving classes before attempting this solo dive. Reporters say her parachute did open, but she began to spin out of control. Glasgow was critically injured and later died in the hospital. And President Joe Biden delivered a rally speech for Ukraine on the one-year anniversary of the Russian invasion. CNN reporter Mike Valerio has the latest. There should be no doubt. Our support for Ukraine will not waver. NATO will not be divided, and we will not tire. President Joe Biden delivering a defiant declaration at the Royal Castle in Warsaw, a promise of resilience that neighboring Ukraine will not fall. Ukraine will never be a victory for Russia, never. The president called for steadiness of purpose days before the first anniversary of Russia's invasion of Ukraine. President Putin ordered his tanks to roll in Ukraine. He thought we would roll over. He was wrong. Biden last spoke from the storied setting in March of 2022, when the resolve of Ukraine and the strengthening of the NATO alliance were only beginning to emerge. The resolve, underscored by President Biden's historic trip to Kyiv, standing side by side with Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky on Monday. 
While in Moscow, Russian President Vladimir Putin framed the contours of the conflict as an existential battle with the West. The elite of the West do not conceal their ambitions, which is to strategically defeat Russia, finish us off once and for all. Putin announcing Russia is suspending its participation in the new START treaty, the last major nuclear arms agreement between the U.S. and Russia. Back in Poland, the president focused on future generations and what remains at stake. Freedom, the enemy of the tyrant and the hope of the brave and the truth of the ages, freedom. I'm Mike Valerio reporting. Happening today in South Carolina, the only surviving son of the disgraced attorney called to testify. OU Knightley's Ireland Fitzer is following the case and the rest of today's headlines. Ireland. Alex Murdoch has pleaded not guilty to two counts of murder. He's accused of killing his wife and son. Today, his only son took the stand to testify. Take a listen. What'd your dad say? Said they did them so, they did them so bad. The son being asked when he heard his dad say they did them so bad. The son saying on the same day of the murders. The murders happened just days after Alex was accused of extensive fraud at his namesake law firm. A California man is behind bars today after being accused of two targeting deaths. Police arrested 28-year-old Jamie Tran. He's accused of shooting two men in separate incidents three blocks apart in L.A. The Justice Department says he was motivated by hate. And students, heads up. The long pause on federal student loan payments is set to end later this year. Millions of former students will have to begin or resume paying those bills in just months. Right now, it's possible students' loan payments won't restart until August. And many students are waiting to see if President Biden's big student debt forgiveness plan survives legal challenges. Dana, Catherine. Thanks, Ireland. An interfaith prayer vigil will be held for the Turkey and Syria earthquake victims tonight in Oklahoma City. The vigil will take place at St. Paul's Episcopal Cathedral from 7 to 8 p.m. at 127th Northwest 7th Street. And a Turkish food fair fundraiser is set to provide relief for earthquake victims on February 25th. The Turkish Raindrop House at 4444 Classen Boulevard will hold the event from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. And some big temp com tech companies could be in for a shock. When we return, find out about the impactful decision being made in the Supreme Court. And an incident at the Pentagon with a possible leak. We'll tell you what is being investigated coming up. Hearings in D.C. this week could carry significant stakes for Internet users. OU Knightley's Carolyn Felling is in the studio with more on the legal battle ahead in today's science and technology. The Supreme Court is deciding how to move forward with online speech and content moderation. The outcomes could determine whether tech platforms and social media companies can be sued for recommending content to other users, for supporting acts of international terrorism by hosting terrorist content. But some are even questioning if the justices are equipped enough to make the decision because they may not fully understand social media. Also in D.C., the U.S. Military Special Operation Command is investigating a possible email server link. As they investigate, the concern is wrapped around not having to use a password to get into unclassified emails. Special Command officials say so far they can confirm that no one has hacked its information systems. And here in Oklahoma City, a nonprofit is taking the entrepreneurship community to a new level this Thursday. The Verge OKC aims to help entrepreneurs launch new ideas and introduce them to others in the community. They are hoping to create a space for education, curated events, and flexible workspaces. The Verge will host its launch party this Thursday near Reno and Oklahoma Avenue. Dana, Catherine. Thanks, Carolyn. When we return, two OU colleges came together to support its students during Black History Month. Coming up, we'll tell you why students found this particular event important. And in true Oklahoma fashion, the weather is making a statement once again. That's right, Dana. Meteorologist Colton Williams tells us about the severe weather we can expect in the next couple days. Colton?
Yeah, ladies got a round of severe storms on its way. We're going to talk about it as well as a cool down coming up this weekend. I'll let you know what next week looks like coming up in just a few minutes. All right, welcome back to OU Nightly. Thanks for joining us. I'm Colton Williams. Hey, look at our campus cam looking good out there. Stubborn layer of clouds hung out throughout the day today. That helped us keep cooler than some of the state of Oklahoma. Right now, though, again, still feeling way more like a March or April day than early February. We do have some sunshine coming in now. We've seen a couple peaks here and there, but overall clouds still kind of stubborn. Again, temperatures in the lower 70s feeling nice and dry out there, but that's going to change overnight tonight. You can see here, there goes that cloud cover again, staying stubborn, but it's finally starting to wear away and that's what's going to lead to maybe a brief heat up here before then we go into our evening hours. But you see down in the Red River, they've seen sunshine all day long. They heated up to the upper 80s throughout the day today. OK, so now going into this evening again, cloud cover breaking for a minute, then it's going to return overnight tonight. But you see our temperatures stay very steady. We're headed into midnight in the upper 60s, and this is again very unseasonable for this time of the year. The winds are going to stay steady, and that's all going to tie into our first severe weather risk of the year. Now, again, this is overnight tonight. This is a slight risk for severe weather includes primarily I-35 and eastward, but we do have a bit of a chunk of the Oklahoma City Metro in effect here for severe storms overnight tonight and into tomorrow. Now, again, it's a pretty low end risk, but we still do have the chance for potentially uh, some damaging winds, some medium sized hail and a spin up or two. OK, so now overnight tonight looking again. Uh, the main thing is we're going to get some rain out of this 70 percent chance overnight tonight. Before then, also the nice thing is it's going to be out of our hair by lunchtime tomorrow will be dry and temperatures. They're going to return to the lower 70s. OK, now again into tomorrow. See here in the morning we do have rain going on. I think it'll clear up between the 9 and 10 o'clock hour. And then we're down into sunshine all day long looking at temperatures in the 70s. Check out that wind column though. Looking at wind gusts 30 to 40 to maybe even 50 miles per hour for some Oklahomans. You see today winds gusting 20, maybe 30. Overnight, we crank them up to the mid 30s. Tomorrow by lunchtime, looking again, wind gusts nearing 40, 50 for some Oklahomans. That's going to slowly taper off throughout the evening, tomorrow evening. Okay, now. That all comes in, ties in with the ongoing drought. We've got dormant vegetation. Now we'll see wind gusts. That's going to lead to a moderate risk of fire in some western counties and in the Oklahoma panhandle. Now here goes that first round of rain and storms. That's overnight tonight. It's a fairly weak wave. It could bring some severe thunderstorms. And then again, then we get chilly for the next several days. We'll feel more seasonal over the next couple of days before then. Now we'll have a better storm system roll in here. This could bring the chance for some strong storms looking at Sunday and into Monday. This is a system now we're going to have to start to keep a bit of an eye on. And here's Storm Prediction Center already issuing an outlook. We see a slight risk now. We'll see this location and impacts change over the next several days. But again, this is for Sunday, and it does right now include the Oklahoma City Metro. Going to keep an eye on this. Okay, now here for your seven day. Again, tomorrow morning is rainy, but the afternoon is not. Thursday and Friday, check out that cool down lows in the 20s for Thursday night. Before then, early next week, we warm back up, bringing the storm changes. Ladies, back to you. Thanks, Colton. And in celebration of Black History Month, two colleges on OU's campus came together to create an event focusing on black women in the media industry. OU Nightly's Katani Gooch was able to speak with organizers and attendees about why this event was important to them. Knowing that I was going to have to wear my hair a certain type of way as well, that should be my choice. Creating a respectful and open world for natural hair. <laughs> Otherwise known as the Crown Act. My hair is always a topic of conversation. Established in 2019 for women of color to ensure protection against discrimination based on hairstyles. Because I am her and I have straight hair, I do know that people see me differently than my counterparts. Gaylord College and the College of Atmospheric and Geographic Sciences came together to foster conversation about natural hair in the broadcasting industry. For most of us, straight was the only way to wear our hair because if not, we were to make other people feel like something. Right, by wearing our hair in our natural hair form. Panelists from stations in Oklahoma City and Gaylord students spoke on their own hair care journeys and the way it's affected their career lifestyles. If anybody tells you to do anything other than what you want to do with your hair, that's your cue to run to the door. It gets exhausting having to explain yourself and having to explain why I want to look a certain way and why I feel the need to express myself this way. Organizers say speaking on shared experiences and finding camaraderie were the main goals of this event, as well as that there were several black-owned hair vendors who came out to promote their products. Reporting at the National Weather Center, Katani Gooch, OU Nightly. 
All right, what a great event that took place on campus. And I know another event that's happening tonight that we're going to both be headed to right after this. That's right, Dana. Our OU men's basketball team will be back at the LNC tonight and will definitely be there. OU Knightley's Zoe Watson is here to tell us what to expect. Zoe, will you be heading to the game tonight? I won't be at tonight's game, but definitely next time. OU men's basketball gears up for tonight's game and a player's mindset changes the game. I'll have all the details next. Hello, I'm Zoe Watson and it's time for sports. OU baseball dropped the weekend series to California Baptist but got back to work on Monday. Freshman catcher Easton Carmichael had his first college hit in the second inning and scored two runs. Junior shortstop Dakota Harris hit a two-run double in the bottom of the eighth inning to get Oklahoma the win over Air Force 8-6. And OU men's basketball player Joe Bemisil is making a name for himself. Bemisil has played at three different schools in the last three years. Head coach Porter Morgett likes Bamisil's work ethic. Your choice is pout, blame, be mad at the world, and all those things, or try to get better, try to fight, try to be persistent and, and address the things while you're not playing. And Joe has chose that path. You know, I still think that the, the, there's learning curves for him, but, man, he, he was able to make some plays offensively for us uh, in a very tough environment against a very good defense. And Oklahoma gymnasts are winning awards left and right. For the third consecutive week, OU women's gymnast Faith Torres takes home Big 12 Newcomer of the Week. OU men's gymnast Zach Nunez and Ignacio Yockers are gymnasts and gymnast specialists of the week. And New Tech is coming to OKC Dodgers baseball. Automated umpires will be making game calls during Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday games and weekends will be human empires. Team president and general manager Michael Burns says it will still be America's pastime. There's a mix of diehard baseball fans. There's those looking for family entertainment. There's those coming out with a corporate outing. And not everyone is, is super in tune with all of the, the elements of the rules. Um, and so I think there are many that were experiencing it for the first time and, and not quite aware that the automated ball strike system was in play. The other thing that would reinforce that with me is the amount of people telling the umpire he got it wrong. There was still plenty of that going on last year. And I guess Russell Westbrook missed the California Heat. After final, finalizing a contract buyout with the Utah Jazz, the former Thunder Guard plans to sign with the Los Angeles Clippers, according to multiple reports. And that is Westbrook's fifth team in five years. Back to you. Thanks, Zoe. It's a tasty time of year once again, and one Norman resident has big goals. When we return, find out where and when you can purchase some classic treats. I'm Darian Curry at the OU Nightly Update Desk. Police just arrested a man for arson after allegedly setting fire to an Oklahoma City apartment unit. This happening near East Wilshire and Kelly. Police arrest Chandon Wright after he says he set fire to kill the snakes on the wall. He also admitted that he knew setting the fire was wrong. Dana, Catherine, back to you in the studio. Thanks, Darian, and it is February, which means it is Girl Scout cookie season. That's right. Troops all over the state are selling cookies, and we found one local troop selling them right here on campus to students. Eliza Larson's goal is to sell 1,000 boxes, and she's sold about 400 so far. We sell these cookies to have fun, and the money goes towards the Girl Scouts Corporation, and we get some money for trips and fun stuff. Norman residents who are looking for their favorite Thin Mint cookies have until March 19th, and you can go to the Girl Scout cookie website to find a troop near you. I'm really excited about those Girl Scout cookies. Now, I know it's a little boring, but I have to say my favorite cookie has to be the tree foil. I'm definitely excited too, <laughs> Catherine, but that is a little bit basic, so I'm going to sweeten it up a little bit, and I'm going to have to go with the Samoas as my favorite Girl Scout cookie. So I'm definitely looking forward to getting some of those right after this. Absolutely. Well, with the storms rolling in tonight and the possibility of severe weather, let's check in one last time with OU Nightly weather expert Colton Williams to hear when these storms could come in. Colton? 
Yeah, ladies, might have a more of a familiar but become unfamiliar sound come through overnight tonight. May hear a couple rumbles of thunder as well as the potential for one or two severe thunderstorms overnight. We're going to expect them to expand south from southwestern Oklahoma into central Oklahoma until 6 a.m. tomorrow. And then by 9 a.m. tomorrow noon, they'll be out of here. They'll be in eastern Oklahoma looking at a cool weekend. Rebound next week, ladies. Thanks, Colton, and thanks for watching OU Nightly. I'm Dana Searles. And I'm Catherine Liberta. Be sure to tune in to OU Nightly every weekday, live at 4.30. Good night.